Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be checking out a turntable and it's made by a company called Tomkin. So this is the box that it comes in. It's a pretty decent size, not much more on it. Here we have the model number which is MT320RL40. So yeah, lots of letters and numbers but yeah, I'm pretty excited to see what kind of turntable this is. And also on the stable here it shows that it's powered by 15 volts and power consumption of 10 watts. Alright, I went ahead and cut the tape so let's open it up. And this is what we see. So right on top we have an instruction manual. So it does cover multiple models. And it has a little more information about each one. And ours is that second one, which here we have the speed from 24 to 68 seconds per turn. And then the weight capacity of 40 kilograms, which is about 88 pounds. So yeah, this thing can hold quite a bit of weight. So probably the more important thing is our remote that does all the controls. And you guys can see it breaks down every button and what it does. And on the back here we have a few notes. Basically saying here that the sound desk from 40 to 60 is normal so it is you know not silent obviously and the maximum load should not exceed past the top of the turntable so you know if you put like a piece of plywood or something on top and then put something even larger on that you're gonna put a lot of pressure on the edge so yeah the maximum weight is only on the surface of the plate and so if you're gonna put anything on top you got to consider that and also down here it says that it's not waterproof all right so let's check this thing out it's packed nicely so here we can see the bottom there are foam feet quite a few of them injected molded plastic we got the brand naming there so yeah not too much to see here and the top is also just plastic injected molded and it does kind of have a strange finish to it it's not consistent or even should i say you guys maybe can see so not terrible looking but i wish it would look a little better honestly especially for this price so on the sides here there appears to be a little light there and if we go this way we have an on and off button the input port to plug in our power supply and the manufacturing label which pretty much looks identical to the one that was on the box so we do get a power adapter that is 15 volts 1.2 amps and a decent length cord of about four feet and last but not least the remote and you guys can see there's quite a few options on it and this is what probably makes this turntable pretty cool is because you can control it from this remote now what's interesting is they did not include any batteries so you will have to get your own AAA batteries two of them but overall not so bad and the remote's pretty comfortable to hold. Alright, so I'm gonna move some of this stuff out of the way. Let's go ahead and plug in the turntable. I wish the cord was a little longer, but no big deal. Okay, so I guess the power was already on. So it just starts turning on its own. Yeah, it's actually quite powerful. You guys can see when I'm holding the top, the whole bottom spins, so... It's quite strong. So I guess that's just kind of like the default mode that it goes into when you first turn it on. It just starts turning at this paste here. So it is making a sound and it's actually kind of a, not a consistent sound, but more of a like, rrr, rrr, rrr. see if I can get my mic closer. In any case, all right, so I got a couple AAA batteries. Let's go ahead and install them. And first thing I'm gonna do is push stop. And there we go. Okay, so it does catch everywhere no matter where you point it. So that's a good sign. And it also beeps, if you guys can hear that. So two beeps for stopping and one beep for accelerating. So for now, let's put this little benchy here. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's actually a benchmark for 3D printers, which we recently printed. But yeah, let's see if we can figure out how to use some of these things on the remote. So here we have a lock button, a save button, and then we got hot buttons for the turntable to turn that certain degrees. So if we push on 0.1 degrees, it barely moved a tiny bit. 0.5 is a little more. 164th and then 148th. And then below that we have some more turns, 132nd. So this is kind of like our ramping up of a little more, a little more. So this is one eighth of a turn. And then we got a whole quarter of a turn and that'd probably be a little more useful to me as this thing would turn exactly this much, a quarter. And we can see the little benchy there stops exactly at one quarter of the turn. So here we have set current position and then this one on this side is return to current position. So if we set it, let's just manually turn it somewhere and I'll stop it here and then let's click return and it should go back exactly to where it was. 
And sure enough, it does. So yeah, these two could actually be really helpful if you're trying to move, let's say you're filming something and you want to take multiple shots or you want it to return back to where it was. You could use these hot buttons, which could be quite useful. So the buttons down here are a little confusing to me. I guess with time, maybe I'll figure out what they do, but something about multi-angle shooting, suspending time. Maybe this has something to do with programming it to go certain places, but. And the one over here is an intermittent rotation. Okay, so that makes sense. It moves and then stops and then moves again and stops. And I'm guessing whatever you program it to how much to move, that's what it'll do. So definitely takes a little time to figure this thing out. Now what's really simple is this middle control, which you have pause and play. Very straightforward. So the plus goes faster, the minus goes slower, and this is turning the direction of the turntable. So if we want to go the other way, okay, so that's this way. There we go. And let's say we want to slow it down. So the thing I'm noticing right away here is that if you're planning on using this and recording video with sound, it's probably not a great thing because it's quite loud. And certain settings are louder than others or speeds, I guess, but mostly it's pretty much all the same. So if the sound doesn't bother you, obviously not a big deal, but if it does, it's, you know, quite intrusive in my opinion. Here we have the quickest speed, which is the quietest also. Quite interesting. So yeah, I like how you can turn directions. That's very useful and you know, speed it up or slow it down and obviously stop it. So I think guys, this button here just goes back from the intermittent rotation. So, you know, if you want it to continuously spin, you just click on this. So the bottom buttons here are programmed to certain key locations. So, you know, they're kind of like hot buttons that you can push and the very bottom ones, you know, they're confusing me even more. Some kind of focus, output focus signal and output shutter signal. So yeah, I'm thinking, you know, maybe if we use it more and play around with the buttons, we might be able to figure out some of these things. But yeah, the manual is pretty good, but a little vague on exactly what everything does on the buttons. And there's quite a few of them. But the good part is, is that we figured out how to use the basics, which to me is pretty much what I really needed it for. All right, so for the next part, let's put something larger on here, like this 3D printer. And as you guys can see, it doesn't fit perfectly on there, but it does fit. Now, if you're gonna use this for product reviews like I am, it might be a good idea to get some kind of platform for the bottom where it looks cleaner, cause you know, you don't wanna see this thing here. But for this video, we just wanna <laughs> check it out and see how it's gonna do spinning this pretty decent sized 3D printer around. And by the way, it does weigh about 18 pounds or so. So we do have pretty good weight on there. And I'm gonna turn down the speed and you can do that before you even start it, which is kinda cool. Okay, so when it hits the very low, it double beeps, letting you know there's no more going slower. So maybe if you need precise speed control every time you use it, maybe there is a way to program that into one of these hot buttons. All right, so let's go for it. And you guys can see we are spinning around and this is the slowest speed. So yeah, for a larger item like this, a slow speed is still, you know, decently quick. Pretty good actually, I mean, it's not that fast, but the bigger the item, the faster it's gonna spin on the outside. But like the benchy here is obviously, you know, spinning a little bit slower if you get closer to the center. So let's go ahead and speed it up and see what happens. Let's just go all the way to the fastest, you know. Yeah, that's the fastest and yeah you guys can see how fast that is compared to the slowest and it's actually pretty quick now one thing that was very important to me whenever it does turn let's stop it here it doesn't jitter or like do weird things and it seems like it's pretty stable now there is a little bit of flop in the turn table but whenever it just spins or starts spinning it seems like the flop kind of goes away obviously if you push it there is play in the turn table so if it starts going it seems to be pretty smooth Okay, let's try to go the other direction. And yeah, looks like our little plant there is getting uh, some action. But <laughs> anyways, yeah guys, uh, overall I'm pretty happy with it. It's definitely louder than I thought it was gonna be. I must have hit some kind of program somewhere again. So I'm just clicking this back button over here and it seems to cancel everything out and just go to normal spinning. But yeah, as I was saying, I think the noise level is a little louder than I wanted, but not a big deal because most of the things I'm gonna shoot is going to be without audio, just kind of like for B-roll, things like that. Yeah, you can get pretty creative with the turntable. And I know for a fact already that my favorite option would be to let's say we'll stop it here and then we'll click the save position button and then I'm gonna play it and let's say you know this is the amount I wanted to churn and now I can just hit the back button and it'll go back to the other position meaning that I can start it with the same position every time which is absolutely awesome I definitely love that so no matter how much I do it back and forth do it back and forth 
it'll always go back to where it started and you know that could be quite important when you're trying to film certain takes certain angles whatnot else so yeah so there's probably a little more features and whatnot else we're not completely covering here but overall i'm you know pretty happy with this thing i think you know it does the job for spinning things around you can put pretty heavy things on there the weight is rated for the size of the turntable and you know not anything larger so if you're gonna you know put platform on there you would probably want to cut down the weight quite a bit of what it can handle so i feel like anywhere 30 to 40 pounds this thing should easily do even some kind of platform on the bottom so so yeah very capable and very versatile and this remote is awesome for controlling it but yeah guys i mean i think if you know what you need this for you would be happy with it it is not cheap almost a hundred dollars a little under but considering what it can do and the weight it can hold it seems pretty reasonable and it could really add value to your videos all right well hopefully this quick little video was helpful i'm definitely going to be using it in videos to come mostly for b-roll shots and i'm pretty excited to see what i can come up with if you are interested in anything else i do like these 3d printers check out these links at the end and if you enjoy videos like this and you want to see more, stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.